high-tech advances in communications, transport, defence and other sectors have one thing in common. Burgeoning demand for exotic rare earths for key componentry. And with 80% of rare earths currently coming from China, identifying new sources is becoming a priority. The formation of Cheetah Resources in 2017 and its acquisition by Perth-based Vital Metals in June 2019 have heralded a new approach in the rare earth sector. Gone are mining and production strategies based on huge capital expenditure, demanding refining operations and delayed shareholder returns. Instead, a simple, new, low-cost model based on a rapid path to production and early profitability. The traditional approach to rare earths is that to make any money, you need to produce a separated product. And the reason for that is because the plants are large, you need to make a lot more money to fund the construction. So if you say, well, we don't need to be as large to start, so we can simplify it, the question is, do you need to produce a separated product? And our argument would be, no, you don't. You don't need to do that. The key thing is, can you build and operate a plant for a low capex, low opex, which will generate a profit selling an intermediate product which has all the waste taken out? And if you can do that, that then is a much simpler operation which will enable you to get into production in a shorter time frame. Cheetah Resources was founded by Jeff Atkins and Jamie Henderson's Transocean Group. We didn't want to have egos come into it. We just want to be simple guys, go in, mine it, ship it out to Linus or Rodia or the Japanese or the Chinese or whoever wanted to concentrate. There's plenty of guys who like the ego of building a billion dollar chemical engineering plant or a half billion. You know, a lot of the guys are talking about half a million. Um, we had no interest either of us in doing that. For companies like Australian rare earth operator Linus, refining ore to produce up to 17 different products to exacting customer specifications is a capital and time intensive process. People currently think about rare earth projects and the development strategy of rare earth projects is a look at it a very similar way to other projects, so other mining projects. What that means is you get a resource and you try to scale the project for how big the resource is. And the idea is bigger is better. So what you end up with is because of the specialised nature of rare earths and the complexity and the amount of time it takes rare earth projects to be developed, you end up in a bit of a spiral type situation where you start off at a, at a single point and then you ask, okay, how can we make this bigger? Once it gets bigger, well, that's gonna be a bit more risky. Because it's more risky, the plant becomes more complex. Because the plant becomes more complex, it's more expensive. Because it's more expensive, it then has to be bigger again. And you keep working around in this spiral until you eventually reach a point where the project is defined. Rare earth projects are developed by junior mining companies who rel relatively have small market caps. What that means is that to develop a large complex project, they need to raise significant equity, which means a lot of shareholder dilution. And those two things together lead to why a lot of rare earth companies or initial shareholders in rare earth companies don't actually receive a very good return on their initial investment even if the project gets into operation. Jeff Atkins heads up the resource, engineering and management team at Cheetah. Collectively, they can boast more than 50 years high-level involvement in rare earths. Jeff, in his previous role, or previous roles a couple ago, at Linus had actually looked at virtually every rare earth project in the world. So, you know, he had an outstanding, almost encyclopedic knowledge of small projects that he'd looked at uh, around the world. According to Jeff Atkins, Typically long lead times for customer acceptance mean expenditure running ahead of revenue for up to a decade. With this approach, returns for early investors can be very hard to come by. Typically for a rare earth project, you're normally going to be looking at somewhere between about 500 million and a billion dollars for to develop a full processing facility, particularly if you're looking at going down into separated rare earths. Now, that's for a scale of industry standard is that seem to be going for about 10,000 ton, 5,000 ton, up to 20,000 ton. What people forget is that because the industry is so specialised 
and the product specifications are so tight, the key aspect which then drives profitability is getting customers to accept your product at specification. So what that means is that for a typical project, before they actually reach profitability, by the time they go through three to five years worth of construction and financing, then you start the customer acceptance process and the project ramp up. By the time the customers are accepting enough product to generate a profit, you might be looking at eight to 10 years after you've started. Jeff and the Cheetah team have applied their experience to develop an alternative strategy for the development of rare earth projects. It's based around the development of products containing minerals that are easily processed, rather than focusing on the grade of the ore body. A simple analogy is to compare sand and rocks. If you have two samples, one is red sand and white sand, and another is red rocks and white rocks. It doesn't matter what the relative grade is. If you're asked to separate the red from the white, it's gonna be a lot simpler to do it with the rocks. It doesn't matter if it's a lower grade, if there's less red in there compared to the sand, you'll always get a higher grade finished product with the rocks, a lot simpler and a lot quicker than what you will with the sand. If you do that with the sand, you'll always end up with white sand mixed in, you'll lose a lot of red sand. And that's, it's like that with mineral processing as well. If you have a mineralogy which is difficult to process, it doesn't matter if the grade is higher, it will still cost you more. So the trick is to find a deposit which has that ease of processing, which will enable you to reduce your costs and simplify your operation. Using this principle, Jeff and his team developed a plan to find well-defined ore bodies containing large rare earth crystals instead of the more traditional high grade, but very fine grained product. If we looked at the spiral, which we spoke about before about how a rare earth project is typically produced, let's look at it the other way. How can you make that project simpler? If you make it simpler, it can be smaller. If you make it smaller, the customer acceptance time frame reduces. If that reduces, you don't need as big a plant, which means it doesn't cost as much. So you actually find, if you take that approach, you actually find yourself in a reverse spiral until you get to the point of what you want to build. And the key thing there is saying, how can you build a plant which will not dilute shareholders? Cheetah's first two holdings are at Nechalacho in Canada and at Wigu Hill in Tanzania. We believe both these projects meet our criteria and our target is to proceed with test work and engineering work which will bring those projects into production in the shortest possible time frame for the lowest possible cost. As such, we have been undertaking a program of metallurgical test work, reassaying of existing core, and over the coming months we will be announcing the conversion of resources to JORC, metallurgical test work results, engineering results, and cost results, as well as forecast operational dates.